Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at the SCI National Convention in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am with Dr. Bill Dickinson of Tetra Hearing, and we actually met here it's, uh, last year. Gosh, We're, I should have brought flowers. It's, it's like our, our, it's our anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> yeah, like I feel a little bit, you know, uh, uh, like, well, you know, I, I can take this bottle of bourbon home over here. It, it, well, I heard know, that that I, thing I, is in high demand. It, it's, uh, it, it, if it doesn't walk out of here on two legs today, I'm going to be shocked <laughs> because... Um, it's gotten a lot of attention. Yeah, I don't, so, I'm not uh, a bourbon drinker, but apparently this is a giveaway is more popular than like anything on the show floor right now. What's what's so cool about this entire show is that you can just you, you can just have fun, yeah. right? Like in uh, we had a ball, the whole team helped yeah. put it together, and we just we just kind of thought like, okay, well, what would what would this consumer want? Yeah. And and we just built something fun. And they're all over it. They're jumping on it hard. Uh, yeah. we we're going to do the drawing on on Saturday to to win that bottle. Yeah. Or when we sell the twenty, we only did a, a limited edition of twenty things, and and uh, I, I think they're going to be sold out pretty quick. Well, so. and you guys have been such a strong supporter of not only SCI as the national, but you you guys were also at the Music City chapter the other night, supporting the local chapters as well. And um, I was there, and you you guys had a great presence. It's um, you know, it's it's grassroots, right? Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't, if you don't, if you don't get momentum in your local communities. Um, it's super hard to do it on yeah. a national level. And yeah. so we've tried to, with all the organizations, we tried to be really close with the local chapters. Um, I will tell you, Mark Moore, the president, uh, I think it's his second or third year here. Yeah. He's done some incredible work. And yeah. um, he's a super smart businessman, and he runs this chapter like a business. And, and I think that's what we saw on Monday. Yeah. I mean, the, it was standing room only yeah. in a very big ballroom. Well, they so. had sold out the year prior was my first time going to that event. And it was sold out that evening. And it was a beautiful venue. And we moved locations this year, and we sold out of that event as well. And the energy, you know, people here are so excited to be on the show floor. I think, you know, coming out of post-COVID, everybody is just so <laughs> glad to be you know, having fellowship, talking with other hunters, being at, a, at an event like this. And, and they're breaking records with this SCI convention as well as far as attendance already. And it hasn't even, today's the first day. Well, they built a heck of a brand, um, but I think I think Nashville uh, was a perfect move for yeah. them. Um, yeah. it, it's certainly it's a short twenty mile ride for us, a whole lot quicker than than for you coming from Wyoming. Yeah. Although, when was the last time you were in Wyoming? Uh, it seems like you've been every other state. I was but home, your home for state, like twenty four so. hours this month, like. Yeah. but Yogi hasn't been home at all so you know bless his heart at least I got to go home I went home and I rode my mule one day I was like hello you need a break yeah but it's it is good to be here so like what brought Tetra Hearing to SCI what you know what behind the mission of, behind the organization made you guys want to be part of it you know uh it's actually a, a fantastic question um and it's interesting I was talking We've got the teams grown so much uh, this year. So last night we were together, you know, kind of in, in for three or four of the new members that mm -hmm. you've yet to meet and you've, you're kind of getting your feet wet. I was just kind of walking through like what to expect and what, what, what really stood out. And the reason it's such a good question, Tetra became well known and the brand was wrapped around this, this concept of pursuit based hearing, right? Yes. 
that as a turkey hunter or an elk hunter or big game hunter versus a wing shooter or a duck hunter, like you need you need to hear and protect your ears yes. based on the pursuit that you're chasing. Yes. Well, guess what? All these guys and gals here, they chase everything. That's right. And so it was almost a little bit, um, it was a little bit awkward in the beginning uh, because, you know, we knew if we wanted to talk to the duck hunter, we would go to Ducks Unlimited right. Expo or Delta Expo yeah. or the turkey hunters, certainly at NWTF, yeah. uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Sheep Show. And this is a this is a mixture of all of it. And, yeah. But we can do such cool stuff. One of our uh, one of our big moments in in Tetra is to go. You know, we've talked about it, live the life that you want to yeah. live. And uh, we can design. We have a device that you can be on the top of a mountain chasing an ibex with a bow, uh, or you could be getting a gator somewhere in a swamp. And yeah. And we got the right device that you need for there. Well, and what I love about it is not just protection; it's enhancement. And there's so many. Um, you know, other hearing protection companies out there that enhance and make things loud. You guys take that to another level. I mean, it is precision hearing at its best. Like, you know, you're coming from this extensive background in audiology. You have a tremendous expertise. You're actually an audiologist. So we're just going to call you Dr. Bill from (laughs) now on. Um, But you genuinely have this expertise in this background and you're building into the devices these different programs and when you press the button on the side it'll tell you your turkey or range or landscape wherever wherever you're at so that if you're running a lawnmower it's going to protect those frequencies that are different from when if you're trying to amplify the sound of an elk bugle yeah well you always i love listening to you say because you understand it and you um and the cool part is you do this awesome job of connecting it to what's most important to my heart, and that's the hearing experience. Yes. And it's most important to your heart because my of father. what you shared with your yeah. father, right? And and you've watched him his entire life, your life, him struggle on a day-to-day basis, let alone when you're out in the field together. And that's truly the devices that were on the market and that are on the market today do a great job at protecting. Yeah. I, I always tease. People think I'm joking. I'm really not. The good Lord made a great hearing protection yeah. and that was two index fingers, right? And you right put them in your, your ears. ears and it's going to, it's going to take away yeah. enough of most damaging sound. Yeah. The problem is you don't know when you necessarily have to put yeah. them in your ears, but it also creates a crummy listening experience. And yeah. as, as you know, and what you've embraced is like, let's, what what you've done with long distance shooting mm-hmm. and you know a, a, a great career with Ruger and and lots of other guns, like you just keep fine tuning and fine tuning yeah. and fine tuning until you get that that weapon to do exactly what you want. Yeah. And we did the same thing with the ear mm-hmm. and uh, what what your father needs uh, chasing an elk in that big open country mm-hmm. is completely different than the Georgia turkey hunter. Yes. Uh, that's trying to figure out w- what ridge he's on. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know he's, I know he's close, but I can't see him. Mm-hmm. But, so I got to rely on my ears yeah. to, to hear him. And it's been a fun, I love, uh, you know, I had a, I had a, a heck of a ride with the white, with the white lab coat and being yeah. in clinic, but, man wearing camo and, is and, way better. and being the same dr bill is uh yeah. is is way more fun yeah. and and you know it's uh i just i never figured it would get this far this fast yeah. um yeah. five years ago it was it was <coughs> lisa and i in a 10 by 10 booth was our first one and we literally i was printing off graphs and laminating them off of a bad powerpoint presentation oh man and that was our content and now look at the look at the yeah. The, the team that I have around me yeah. and the talent that yeah. is putting this together. And um, in last year, we made a big commitment to extending, you know, that team beyond the office yeah. and partnering with people like yourself mm-hmm. uh, that just absolutely took it to the next level. Yeah. And it's because we didn't have to, I didn't have to convince you that this is important. No. Like uh, once you, once you understood what was going on and how it was different, you just took it and ran yeah. and and you do an awesome job telling your story and it comes off as completely honest and transparent mm-hmm. and heartfelt yeah. and uh i 
I can't make that happen. No. You well, can bring it to life. Product, I can't make it happen. The product is easy to use. I mean, if you think about it, like, I mean, I've hunted my whole life, and, I, you know, I have always wore hearing protection at the range. So I'd wear, you know, those swelling <laughs> foamies where you, you know, roll them together and the tips of your fingers kind of blow off all the dirt that's on them that, that you know, from being in your center console or wherever they were, shove them in your ears and, and then put your muffs over. So I, I, I like, you know, a lot of double ear protection. But when you're in the field, how many people are, are carrying those little foamies around and rolling them up and poking them in and being like, I got to take all this time to do this when we're on a stock or getting ready, you know, to make a shot or, or it, again, it's going to deaden your hearing experience yeah. instead of inc amplify it. So, you know, I never wore hearing protection in the field and that, you know, we preach so much firearm safety and firearms responsibility, especially um, parents and kids, you know, and, and this makes it to where it's just so easy. Like my custom shields, I wear them on the string around my neck and I can pop them in when I want them in and I can pull them out if I don't want them in. And yeah. then they stay on my neck. They don't fall off. Um, and it's been so easy. And like I hunted last year with a muzzle break and I didn't even think about the darn thing. I'm just shooting and, and you know, people around me that maybe didn't have Tetra hearing protection, they're like, holy smokes, that muzzle break. I'm like, oh yeah, I forget about it because I've got these in and it just makes it just so easy to hunt, to hear, to not miss anything. You know, if, if, if you know, my cameraman doesn't have the shot, I can hear him say, no, 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 uh, because I'm protected, but I'm also enhancing the experience to where I don't lose that line of communication in a, in a very critical moment. And it's crazy, when people get all jacked up to shoot anyway, a lot of times subconsciously you, you become slightly incoherent anyway. It's like a fight or flight mechanism that goes on with adrenaline response and, um, there's a lot of people that become like don't hear. And so that's one thing about it is I can still have that ability to focus, have that ability to hear, have that communication and not lose all that cognitive response uh, so that I don't press the trigger when my cameraman is not recording. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven well, forbid that happen. <laughs>。you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with top ret that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through hunting full magazine and to boot you guys they've got tons of great specials through partners like silencer central where if you're an on x elite member you really benefit from those partnerships so if you guys aren't a member i encourage you go online to the on x hunt website use code wild 20 at checkout and you're going to save 20 percent you're going to love being an Onyx Hunt Elite member. Uh, I, I, I wasn't prepared to do this, but we got some cool stuff to show you yeah. uh, that's uh, literally two days old. Yeah for that cameraman yeah. and um, and some things that we can do uh, that again go beyond. You know, we we always look at um, a lot of a lot of what we modeled Tetra off of is what I saw for the last 25 years of my career yeah. on on musicians, right? And um, definitely when I was born, I don't think you're close enough to that, but you you probably saw the the transaction. We're pretty like, much the same age, okay, so right. you know, well, yeah, you're, you're wearing it a whole lot better than I am. But <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Uh, but we're pretty much the same. But 20 25 years ago, musicians never wore anything in their ears, yeah. right? And that all changed about two decades ago when the idea is that you could build a technology that went in their ear that that kind of sounded like these earphones, yeah. right? And for the if when you don't see the video, like I've I've got on, you know, big earphones that are giving me this perfect sound coming from my boom and microphone. They do sound perfect. You oh. put these earmuffs on and you're like, Oh, <laughs> it sounds if, so if the good. whole world could be like that. <laughs> I right? know. Um, but the musician would never tolerate anything in their ear mm -hmm. until you could get it perfect. to to how they needed it to be their their definition of perfect, right? And so this is uh, that's a that's a big part of uh, 
and people, most people look at musicians today, most young kids mm -hmm. think that musicians are wearing something to protect their hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. It's about performance. And if you're the lead singer, you need something different than the drummer or the bass player. And until it got to that level of sophistication, they wouldn't tolerate anything in their ear. Mm -hmm. As that has progressed, um, and, you know, and, and so many people would go into, you know, just walk out on Broadway. And yeah. you can walk in and out to all the honky talks and have all the fun you want. And everyone's like, oh, the musician is so good. Everyone, they're all wearing hearing protection. Yeah. Really, the one that's in the most, the ones that, that have the most problem with there are the bartenders. Yeah. And the bouncers and the bar back and the wait staff. Because they get hammered. Mm -hmm. I mean, the musician may come into these places once or twice a month. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Down on Broadway. And those other folks are there every day. Every day. And yeah. then um, we had one, I had the, the greatest conversation um, with a waitress up at Tootsie's who was pregnant with her second child. Mm -hmm. And very pregnant mm -hmm. <laughs> with her second child. And, like, the, the conversation we were able to have with, like, you need to be a little bit careful. Yeah. I mean, at least there's, like, no smoking in any of the bars yeah. now and stuff like that. So that took some of it that, away. That's helpful, yeah. But, um, don't go to Vegas. We don't it's even think like about <laughs> that. It's like the yeah. amount of hearing loss that yeah. can happen in utero. Yeah. Because that ear is fully developed. Mm -hmm. And the transfer of sound through mom's belly and all that fluid. Is a um, thing. And they don't even think about that. And mm -hmm. I've had great conversations um, with, you know, people in the industry that are, you know, they're always out September 1st for the first mm -hmm. dove hunt. And, and there's a, a lot of wives with their husband and uh, a, a very pregnant belly. Yeah. And I will make a big point. Hey, she's got to sit this one out. Yeah. You know, you're, do, you're doing four age, weeks. I think so. that doctors like say, don't, don't shoot anymore. Like I know my friend, I don't know what gestation period it was, but they had recommended, you probably know, yeah. where yeah. they're like, don't be shooting anymore. At 24, 26 yeah. months, uh, a week, Weeks. not months. Jeez, boy, That's that would be. That's a long time. You're an elephant the, if the, you're still pregnant. The, the at 24 world that there would be no overpopulation, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. You're literally an elephant. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 24, 26 yeah. weeks is uh, about the yeah. about the It'll limit. Because um, that ear, that, that auditory system is fully developed on mm -hmm. that little baby, and. Um, and I'm telling you, like that's the spirit of Tetra. If we can get to yeah. the point where you know a kid. You know, the first time, it's so funny how uh, all my kids couldn't wait to push a lawnmower, you know, and then all of a sudden they did it four times. And, and they realized, like, like, I don't, uh, do I don't, I don't need I don't need to do that again, <laughs> yeah, right? But, like, if, if everything that they do, the first time they handle the chainsaw, the first time yeah. that they're, if, if the idea, if we can. Even the hair dryer. We talked oh. about this before. How, like, if you're that person that washes their hair every day and blow dries their hair every day, you should probably have hearing protection in when you're running that blow dryer every day. Especially if you have a lot of hair. Put that Apple Watch on yeah. and, and, and blow dry that hair. Yeah. And you're about three minutes into it and it's giving you an alarm that yeah. you have just exceeded, you know, your noise level for, for the day. Wow. Right? Like that type of it's stuff. It's impressive um, how quick that goes. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think the more that we, that we get to do that, and, and the, the, whole, the whole goal of Tetra is that if, if, we can get, if we can get the adults that are still influencing the younger generations mm -hmm. to acknowledge that, hey, we've missed the boat. We should have yeah. been paying better attention to this, and I'm going to do a better job as yeah. I introduce these next generations in. And if we, if we get it to that they need to watch their hearing when they're having a ball pulling triggers, that they'll carry it over into other things. Yeah. They'll carry it over into other parts of their life when they're banging on metal and jumping on well, tractors. Well, and we've and talked about that before because my dad has been, if I'm driving his tractor, I've always had to have my ear protection in. If I'm running a chainsaw, weed whacker, lawn mower, anything like that, like I've always... It's been ingrained in me my whole life to have hearing, hearing protection in, which my hearing test came back very good, though, yep. last year when we did that. And, and, and that really, I think, is testament to that. But I can tell you, like, even being at the range and wearing hearing protection, like, when you're doing covered shooting, like, in yeah. indoor-type settings, holy smokes. <laughs> Like Ruger, they were shooting our Red Hawk out there at range day this year, and I, we were under a cover, and it was like, oh, it was still a lot. Uh, it, it, the amount mm. of reverberation, that's what absolutely absolutely kills me. I know how popular the indoor ranges have yeah. gotten and, and stuff like that, but it is, 
it's a harsh environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's certainly I, we don't hesitate. Like I don't I don't take a step back. I, I, I we always recommend when you're in that environment um, put a double, double protection. Up. Right. Like, there's yeah. no reason not to. Matter of fact, you get all the benefit of the aud- of the increased auditory through mm-hmm. the tetra, but double the protection. Yeah. And, right. And so this idea of like. I feel zero need to be like, oh, we're good enough. We're, yeah. Ours is bad enough. Yeah. Ours is like, yeah. no, if it's close, yeah. don't risk it, yeah. right? And like, yeah. who cares like, in those environments of putting on yeah, another side? Better, you better be safe. The difference between that roof overhead uh, or cement wall, like a vertical component in a, in a shooting bay. It makes a huge difference. Versus an open table on your freaking cool farm and I'm dying to see some, right? Like. Uh, and I know you guys are building some awesome facilities out there, yeah. but like it's a it's a night and day difference. Yeah, and, it is huge. Um, and I shoot in my shipping container, and when I shoot in my container, I double up. Yeah, for sure. But just because, like you said, the reverberation, and even when I open all the windows and you know try <laughs> to like make it have this sound <clears throat> escape, you know, I mean, but you still it's like a seismic earthquake of sound yeah. that just hits you. And I remember like in Oregon, the first couple of times I shot out of that container, my neighbors would call me and they're like, "What are you shooting over there?" Like, this sounds like a cannon going off. It's like, no, it's just I'm shooting indoors, and it just sounds really bad. (laughs) When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter ammunition. I had, um, it was NWTF last year, and, and I've heard a lot of, a ton of stories like this, but this one, this one stood out, um, and, and you know from last year when we first met, uh, I'm not afraid, I'm a big crier, right? Yeah. <laughs> we like, cried. I cried within we five minutes, right? We had a cry right? together. Like, it was seriously uh, bonding. I don't know. Well, it was, it was the story about my, my son and yeah. his accident. And, and yes. Um, and, like, and how that had really influenced, uh, you know, the development. Yeah of tetra and um last last year at end at the nwtf convention a uh, full-grown man absolutely mm-hmm. lost it and he was telling a story about when when he lost his hearing yeah and it's so amazing like we used to see this all the time in my career of of taking care of you know the great veterans in this country and and but you'd see it on and any of the kind of the first responders um they know when things went wrong, they know I- exactly the dirt they were standing yeah. on, you know, 42 years ago when, when it went wrong. And this guy went back to like, it was, it was mid nineties and he was in, he was a Kentucky whitetail hunter shooting in a shooting shack uh-huh. and shooting a muzzle brake, mm. 270 muzzle brake. And he was out the front window and the reverberation and, got and it, him and it skirted in, in the, the, there was either another buck came in or the the buck skirted out to the side window. And so when he was in the front window, he said it was probably 20, 18, 20 inches. The barrel, the bar, the brake was outside. He switched over, opened up the side window, and but he said the barrel was probably only t- two to three inches mm-hmm. outside the window. He said, my, he said, I thought I blacked out. He said the amount of sound in that, in that shooting shack. Oh. And he said, it's never been right. He yeah. said, I can't hear anything out of my left ear. And he it's said, my ears have moment. never stopped. And, and he's like, I could care less about that deer. Yeah. He goes, I, I, and he like named the date, named the year, and ended up with, you know, wiping his eyes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was 20-some years later, yeah. and it still impacts him. That day him. Lost, and, lost his one, one of his most precious senses, yeah. which is his hearing. Mm-hmm. We had a we had a, a, a gentleman in uh, who kind of got a little bit verklempt like that this morning. Super great guy from Ohio that we met, and um, and it just kind of progressed to you know how's the show going mm-hmm. uh, out out in the front there to you know a half hour later he's in the booth getting his hearing mm-hmm. tested and 
and the last thing I said, I said, what, what, what hand do you pull a trigger with? Yeah. And he kind of brings up a, sh- a shotgun or put in. He's like, right-handed. I said, so your left ear's probably hurt. He's like, I can't hear anything out of that. And and he was a little bit surprised, like, how'd you know that that quick? And sure enough, we look and like there was this. There's probably a 50 or 60 decibel difference, yeah. and he's a big turkey hunter. Yeah. And um, I said, when was the last time that you were able to tell where a turkey was coming, where, where the gobble was? He says, I haven't turkey hunted without younger ears in the last mm-hmm. 10 or 15 years. You're basically he's like, going in there. Yeah. I mean, it's not blind, but yeah. auditory-wise, you're blind. Yeah. It's so funny that you just went to that. He told a, uh, a rather <clears throat> horrific story about uh, a, a hunting accident, a discharge of a 12-gauge shotgun to his father's face when he was 19. Ugh. And he immediately lost all eyesight. Mm-hmm. A miracle that he lived. That he lived. Um, but he, he and he kind of got very sad about the amount of hearing loss that I shared with mm-hmm. him. He's like, my dad would be so disappointed. Yeah. Because his father, the, the importance that his father had on his hearing. because that is everything. That is how he got all yeah. the information from the world around him. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, that's just, it's the cool, I mean, I do feel, I do feel like I'm Dr. Bill taking care of people mm-hmm. again because it's those same stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and But it's about their passions and it's yeah. about where they, they get the most meaning in life. Yeah. And, you know, I'm the first one. I don't uh, protect it with whatever, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. If we can just, if we can beat that, if... Um, well, we're also staunch on the normalization of, you know, secure it, store it, lock it up. Yeah. Keep your ammo separate <laughs> from your firearm until you're ready to use them together. And um, and eye protection, ear protection at the range, we preach these things all the time. And then everything goes out the window. And, and then people are like, oh, well, how much? Yeah. How much? <laughs> okay, well... You know, our standard shields are, what, 650 bucks? Yeah. And yeah. people are like, well, that's too expensive. Is it really? Like, uh, is it really? This is something that's going to protect your uh, hearing, enhance your experience, and, and better your life? Is it really too much? Like, you have no problem dropping how much money on a trip or boots <laughs> or, a, or a new pair of rain gear. And, and it's not too much. And I, and I think that's that's where we have to normalize that it's an investment as well. Yeah. Um it's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in your future. I, but how can we make that come? Because if that's what it is, if it was like, if you could see your, if you could see your future self, it's the, yeah. it's the classic, write, write a letter, you know, yeah. to yourself yeah. 20 years from yeah. now. Right? Well, the guy and in like, the blind, when he uh, poked his rifle barrel out and he pressed that shot off, if somebody would have said, well, for $650, you can protect your ears and you'll, you won't have this bad experience, he would have wrote the check 10 <laughs> times over and would have been like, it's the best thing he ever did. Yeah. But for somebody that doesn't, you know, you're going into it ignorant. It's, it's like, um, it's like, you know, you get away with doing things a certain way and there's no, um, it's like gambling. You, you don't hit, you if, don't if, hit, you don't hit, and the then risk. you hit. If yeah. you knew the risk, yeah. you wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. Like, if you knew how many times you'd be, okay, I'm not going to win, and then all of a sudden you hit that jackpot. It was the same way with your hearing. It's like you get away with, you you know, you strike empty, and then all of a sudden you get hit, and and people get addicted to that jackpot, right? But if you knew that that <laughs> jackpot was actually going to be detrimental, would you gamble? Yeah. No. <laughs> You know, it, it, Russian it, roulette, it, I guess, would be a good way to explain it. You know, it's it, Russian it, roulette and with your we've, hearing. We've gotten, for the most part, I think we've gotten much better in society yeah. with that. I mean, you look at um, you look at, 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 at drinking and driving, right? Yeah. You look at, like, uh, you know, I, I will say at 55, there was a totally different approach and a totally different message with that, um, with just that topic yeah. of drinking and driving when... When I was that age, where it was relevant, yeah. uh, as a as a young, you know, uh, whether it was when you shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff, yeah. and you were, and and, but now, like, it was so cool to watch, like, for the most part. And I don't think my kids are angels, and they're certainly not perfect. But it was interesting to watch this generation where they don't have to, they like they, they would just get an Uber. Yeah. Like the idea of yeah. like. They, they plan it out so yeah. much better, yeah. right? And like, and yeah. like, just well, it's become more convenient. And we've, but it's changed, right? Yeah. And you, whether you go to like, and I know there's always pros and cons on some of these touchy, like helmets and motorcycles, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, seatbelt use, yeah. right? Like, I, I, I will when I started driving, mom and dad asked me to please wear my seatbelt. 
and it would if I was a smart ass teenager, I would have said, "Why you never did?" Yeah, I never saw you guys do it. Yeah. I'm supposed to do it. Yeah, like downhill out west, downhill skiing. You go out west and you go skiing these days. Oh, it's you, dangerous. You're the goofball. Like yeah. you're the everyone's looking at you like you got three eyes if yeah. you don't have a helmet on. Yeah, you, right. Yeah, and, it's very um, dangerous. And that's just what we're. That's part of the part of the talk track. It's part of the mission uh, is to try just to get to society. Mother Nature will give enough business to audiologists. Like the yeah. hearing aids are good. We don't need to help it You're going to do just fine, right? Yeah. Like we don't need to, to, to expedite it and get it here faster mm-hmm. and make it worse. So. so let's talk a little bit about your different product lines. So starting with, you know, their standards. Um, one size fits most. So we have, a, we have two different, we have a universal fit um, device and, and, and fully custom fit devices. Yeah. You've tried on both your your I have infant sized ear holes. Extra, extra. Is there an extra, extra, extra small? Yeah. I know they have like three XL. Doctor Bill, don't know. <laughs> he did the the mold impressions for my customs, and he said my ear holes have not grown since I was a baby <laughs> infant. So um, that's I think fine. it was. I think you showed up to on this planet with the same size ears. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much. Good. Yeah, I have um, really tiny ear holes, so nobody it, can wear my uh, custom shields. So, and, and so it's interesting, yeah. and, and like a lot of the core of the of the the entire company, Christy, was was put together based on the universal fits, so that you didn't have to go to yeah. uh, to, to an a appointment custom. and to and to get a custom because customs have been around for twenty or thirty years, yeah. and hunters just didn't embrace it, yeah. right? Because yeah. you had to you had to know where to go, you had to wait yeah. for an appointment, and then you had to get them made. And so the idea was to to create a custom experience yeah. that you didn't need a custom. Yeah. Well, then there's ears that need that. What what's what's been very interesting to watch the company over the last you know four and a half almost five years is now about forty five percent of our business is custom. Yeah. And I think that people once they realize like okay this it's is so comfortable this is a uniquely different listening yeah. experience and this idea that that I shouldn't wear the same thing when I'm trying to blow a duck call as when I'm trying to chase a whitetail or a turkey. Yeah. Um, and like once they kind of wrap around that it's the high technology that it is, they're like, okay, for four, five, six hundred dollars more, I can yeah. get it put in, have it made for my ears. And um, bringing down the Bluetooth. So in the custom, we have rechargeable opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a, an incredibly sophisticated Bluetooth system. Um, mine aren't rechargeable. Mine are regular batteries. And I think I, I almost prefer that just because I'm so like archaic with charging my things i'm not real good about that so um i just like it to know that i can replace my batteries but you know on my customs you were saying you can just leave the little garage door open on the battery and and then you know put them away but i just take the batteries out and close them because what i found is my little door would shut and then my then my ears would be dead and but the batteries are cheap. You get them at Walmart. Uh, I mean, you can buy them anywhere. It's um, not like this is an expensive uh, the, battery. The, the thirty-eight dollars and Amazon will send you in two days a hundred batteries. Yeah, right? yeah. And There's so, lots of batteries, um, and they last a long time. The batteries last over twelve hours anyway. They so. could be in any vest pocket, yeah. any blind bag. They're teeny um, tiny. All of that stuff. Yeah. And so I, 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 I tend to agree. There's like two different camps. And what, that's what's cool about you have opportunity. You, you have yeah. your preference. Right? Yogi They're, has the rechargeable ones. Mm-hmm. And does he do a good job recharging them? Yeah, he's pretty good about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just not. Like, he does all the camera stuff, and he dumps footage, and he's the one charging our battery yep. packs, and I'm, like, in la-la land wondering where my shoes are, oh, you know? Oh, phone? Yeah, I, like, where are my shoes? He's doing everything else. But, no, I mean, I we just have very different jobs in our marriage when we're getting ready to go in the field, and mine typically revolves around, like, horses and saddles and tack, and then he's doing more of, like, the geeky camera stuff. So, for me, it's just better not to have to have one more thing to try to remember, and, and charging just doesn't work for me, which is great because there's – Yep. different options you know what's yep. going to work best for you and is if you identify yourself as a human you know are you the battery recharger or are you the person who just rather buy the batteries and have them with you right. i'm a battery buyer what's interesting is uh there's probably less interest in rechargeable in the sci community yeah. uh, across the board yeah. but they're also they're in places where a lot of times there's not a lot of electricity yeah. and um and you know ounces matter if you're trying to backpack for a week yeah. chasing a critter yeah. and uh and carrying three or four battery packs isn't Gets the, heavy or yeah. you know so yeah um 
again, it's a big part is that we, this is what we do too. Yeah. These are our passions. Yeah. Um, and, and that we try to build devices that we would, in a selfish way, that we would use. Well, and um, I'm upgrading mine this year. Uh, Lucas and I already talked about it because I'm <laughs> going for the Bluetooth because I can wear them in the gym then. Uh, and I can listen to my Peloton workouts then when I'm in the gym. So, like, I have this lady that's talking to me. And right now, if you saw me in the gym this morning, I got my phone on the floor. And I got the volume cranked all the way up. Everybody could hear my workout. Oh. Uh, <laughs> because I don't have... I have, okay. you know, I have corded iPhone things because I'm yep. cheap and I don't like spending the money on the Bluetooth ones. That Yogi has Bluetooth ones, but now I'm like, okay, I can upgrade these and then I can use them every day. So then the cost becomes even more justifiable of if you can take them and you have all of these extra uses for them. Uh, I mean, Zoom calls, yeah, like video calls that we're on now and streaming. Everyone's streaming something, right? Yeah. You're watching freaking. TV on in your bed, uh, yes. your wife can be sleeping, yes. her husband I, can be sleeping. Those are the coolest stories. Yes, I, mean, I know. It's this is real life and what it is now. That's why everybody does subtitles on social media because we're all secretly watching <laughs> when our spouse is sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, we hear these all the time, yeah. and it's the greatest feedback. Um, uh, we had one of our, we had a couple different interns in the office this summer, um, and one of them's this fantastic young young woman. Uh, just got into duck hunting, has been shot competitively mm -hmm. her whole life uh, on clay targets. Uh, super awesome young woman. And her big thing with the Bluetooth is that I can, like, I can, I'm comfortable walking across campus. Yeah. Walking, you know, she went to UT Knoxville, walking through a big city. Because with Tetra, you can completely, with the Bluetooth, yeah. this is what you're going to freak out about. You can completely turn up or down whatever your environment is mm -hmm. and then fully stream the Bluetooth. Uh -huh. So you could be on the busiest, scariest street at midnight and be fully attuned of what's going on around you wow. while you're listening to that. Yeah. And and that that is that is not a female thing, right? No, like that's we a all public need safety. we all need head on a swivel and yeah. we all need to be knowing what the hell's going on around us yeah. and um, but just simple things like that. So we're getting ready to release a whole and what we did on the Bluetooth side um, without getting kind of too dorky. Uh, there's different platforms of yeah. uh, different platforms of Bluetooth, and most of it is about how do you consume, how do you get the most out of the rechargeable battery yeah. in the device that you're listening yeah. to. And so the most common Bluetooth that we're all familiar with is what's called low energy Bluetooth. You'll see it as LEBT. And what they do is they they literally they compress the signal and they sample it and they take about thirty percent of the actual of the of you buy a whole pizza mm -hmm. and they only get they only bake 30 percent of that mm -hmm. they take 30 percent mm -hmm. out of it right mm -hmm. they bake 70 percent and so um we went with the exact opposite we went with the most advanced the, the 5.4 bluetooth platform which is 100 percent uncompressed so you will hear music premium sound you will hear music like you've never heard before because you're actually getting 100 percent of that music streamed to you so it's almost like an audio file, yeah. right? Like these uh, yeah. these people that will pay ridiculous amounts of money for speaker systems and stereo yeah. systems, and certainly it's the Bose for hearing protection on steroids. Yeah. I'm going I'm to even, even put that Bose better. on steroids, and really? and I'm a huge Dr. Bose fan, so um, truly. Yeah, yeah, that's so well. Um, I'm really excited. I actually brought mine here to the show just so that um, so that I could. Send them home with you guys. Uh, so, side note well, on that. Well, and also I had them at SHOT Show. So. <laughs> Don't leave. Yeah, I saw them on, uh, on the range. Yeah, with yeah. You. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting. But we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states. 
through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. Again, I got a I got an unbelievable team around me. It's uh, I've kind of almost trained myself out of needing the job. They don't need me anymore. You know um, what? Yours. My dad is so jealous of you right now because he's reading all these books on exit strategy. How can I? How can I let give the reins up? But you do have an incredible team. I mean, I work with a lot of different brands and companies, and um, the team that your company has. I mean, all your marketing material, everything is top notch. Everything is your from your lanyards to your I don't even know what this thing is. What I don't is even this? know what that is, is it, either, like but we, uh, we, we ended up with this super Looks cool really family great. in West Tennessee yeah. that's doing a lot of this branded stuff, yeah. and she just made this. She like yeah. looked at it, and she's like, I think this would be cool for yeah, you. It's great. And, and yeah. I love that like, she could look on the website and see this. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of this, yeah. my son built with one hand during Christmas break because he had surgery on the oh, other no. hand, and so... Uh, you know, it's, it's, but everything it's, is, it's, it is all about your family. It's all about experience. Um, the brand itself is preservation of something, you know, and if you've lost it, enhancing what you don't have. Yeah. And uh, that's what I love. And that, that ties so well into the conservation community. I mean, we can all appreciate the importance of conserving what you have, enhancing your experience. And that is really the foundation of the Tetra brand. And, um, the people that are in this room, I hope, if you're not in this room, that you go on my website and you guys go to my website homepage. I've got a link that'll take you right to the Tetra site or go to the Tetra Hearing website directly. I also have a really cool discount code. So if you go to my website and you hit the discounts tab, go on there. We want to make sure you guys get the best price possible and um, you know have the best experience you can in the field because it is everything. I can tell you, you know, when when I'm hunting with my dad and he can't hear an elk bugle. He'll just sit there and he's like looking around, but as soon as it gets close enough and he can hear it, <laughs> everything about him changes. Yeah. And and we have all been there. Yeah. You know, we've thrown a location bugle out there and nothing responds and we're just like, ugh. But when we hear that fire back, when we hear that turkey gobble back, whatever it is, it it changes our entire hunt. And that's what Tetra does. Um, it protects, it enhances, and everybody should have some form of hearing protection in the field with them. But I hope that all of you will make the investment in yourself and your experience and give Tetra Hearing a solid look. Can't thank you enough. It's true. Uh, I mean, you do a, a great job, and you, you represent the company that I dream of. And so... You know how important that Don't is. Don't make me cry <laughs> again, Dr. Phil. <laughs> I'm Jeez. doing it, but like, We're going it is. There. Like, it's going it's there. unbelievable five yeah. years that, yeah. that we can say that. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's, and it's you know, it's 100% yeah. heartfelt. And it is true. That's why you're the, you're the great partner. SCI is yeah. a great partner. I mean, they are, I think they are quickly becoming the leader uh, yeah. in, in, in yeah. hunting tradition and hunting mm-hmm. conservation yeah. because it's not pigeonholed into a specific. Mm-hmm. pursuit right they're right. they're kind of looking out and, and they don't they don't care if you're a dove hunter or a, or shooting hogs in texas or oh, we going know that on, too on we do it all. <laughs> uh the night chasing hunting. mountain turkeys in southwest oh, yeah. colorado that, that you guys i can't wait for y'all year. to see like, that episode that's a good uh, one that's a really it's gonna be a fun one because so. you were like the shot you pulled off on that turkey this year is absolutely <laughs> unreal. Spot and stock turkey hunting. Uh, Who does that anyway? Oh, uh, you know, I feel the whole point of the trip was so that Lisa could shoot, my wife could shoot her first turkey with you. And, yeah, uh, and well, uh, you guys chased them a long those, way. Those turkeys but, were wild mountain birds, yeah. and that was a that there. It, yeah, that's hunting though. That was not the real bird that I had, or, that, yeah. or the Merriam that I had, yeah. like always been told of. Like, oh, you know, they'll run, they'll run across a 600 cut cornfield, 600 acre field in order to see your decoy. These like, are all that. hunting lies, okay? <laughs> these are not realities. These are hunting lies of. I don't even know where these myths come from, yeah. but hunting is always hunting. It doesn't yeah. matter where you go. I mean, we had lots yeah. of turkeys around us, but. Yep. Heck, I'm looking forward to our next trip together, and um, and I appreciate being able to hear the hunt as a part of what you guys are doing and with Tetra Hearing, and, and I really hope all of you listening go to their website. Go to my website, check the link there, check for discounts on my discount page, and um, I appreciate you.
Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you for girl. being part of SCI yep. and at this convention. And we will see you all for our next episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.